This is Bazaar Morning Call. Broadcasting live from the CNBC TV 18 Motilal Oswal Studios in Mumbai. Good morning. You're with us here on a fresh new edition of Bazaar Morning Call. It's a Thursday morning. We are coming to you, as always, from the CNBC TV 18 Motilal Oswal Studios. I'm Prashant Budvi, my colleague Sonia, and Reema is with us here on the program. Guys, hi, good morning. Hi, good morning, Prashant. Good morning, Hi, Reema. good morning. Markets are fizzling. Temperatures are sizzling. That's the only <laughs> thing I can say. You know, whether gods are really playing havoc, right, in Dubai or here. Absolutely. I mean, it's so hot in Bombay. It's unbearable. Oh, yeah. But uh, I guess what's bearable is we got that midweek holiday. So, <laughs> we got some time to perhaps just, you know, cool off at home. But uh, it's hot in the market as well. I mean, yeah. there, there is some amount of pressure and there's so many cues to watch out for. I think, I don't know the weather. I think it's 30, 30, but feel like forty because of the humidity. It's thirty nine point seven, six and a 40. half degrees <laughs> higher <laughs> than it feels average. Like, <laughs> it feels like not thirty. <laughs> All right. Well, I was under the uh, nice, benign impression that you know it's not as hot as we're feeling, but it is, uh, and it's even it feels even hotter than you know. So let's just quickly rewind the clock, and uh, we got to sort of uh, take into account two days of market action, global market action, uh, because that's what sort of we missed because of the holiday yesterday. So uh, you know, the last two-day change will come up on the S and P and the Nasdaq. Uh, the S and P is down about three quarters of a percent. The Nasdaq was down about one and a quarter percent. This is. Uh, over last uh, two sessions, Tuesday and Wednesday. Uh, now, the big, big story, the big headline, of course, has been Fed Chair Powell uh, essentially completely, not a uh, you know 360-degree uh, turn, but a fairly aggressive turn about what he thought he'd be able to do, which is lower interest rates. So Fed Chair Powell, he doubted the progress that they've been making in the U.S. on inflation. Uh, and he essentially said, if I had to, uh, you know, we'll put out a quote later it's, as well, but he basically said that core PCE inflation, which is due next week, this is for the month of March, if it remains stuck at 2.8%, then it would, uh, that would be reason to delay cuts further. And I think, uh, you know, this is quite something. The, the first time Fed sounded dovish was when the U.S. 10-year hit 5%. That was fall last year. And then financial conditions eased, and throughout the last many months, we've been hearing from Powell that uh, you know the the path forward is lower, uh, and uh, it's coming. That's essentially what the market has been made to believe. But in a way, Powell sort of marking himself to the market because we've had three data points, actually six in total: three non-farm payrolls number, jobs data, which have been blowout numbers, strong numbers, and three CPI numbers, which have been above expectations. Uh, and uh, that's basically what's caused this. Now, the 10-year in the U.S., it hit 4.66%. Uh, that was the day high day before yesterday. And then it slipped. So basically, an 8, point, 8 ba basis point rally on, on yields on Tuesday. And then yesterday, last night, an uh, 8 basis point slip. We left off at 4.59, uh, pretty unchanged from, uh, from our perspective. Uh, the dollar index, it slipped a little bit. So it's, we're just under 106 105.92 is where the dollar index is now trading at, uh, trading at as well. Now, oil prices, they slipped as well. 3% uh, in the last two trading sessions. We are at about 87.40. All right. I mean, oil was looking like it's going to have a runaway move because of geopolitics, etc. But I think the lack of any new geopolitical news is being interpreted as good news as, from, as far as commodity markets are concerned, right? Because... Uh, you know, there, there is chatter, there are comments from this side, that side, but there is nothing new which will move the story forward in terms of how the retaliation which Israel has said it's got no option but to uh, will come, uh, in what measure and, and when exactly. Uh, now, overnight, we also kind of heard uh, some bid on tariffs. This is US-China. It's an election year in the US, elections in November, but we're already starting to hear uh, you know, both sides, Democrats and Republicans saying, I mean, they're both united in one thing, that you've got to tariff China more. So Biden last night, essentially, uh, President B uh, Biden called to triple the tariff rate on Chinese steel and aluminum products. That's one. Trump, by the way, uh, uh, weeks earlier has already said that if he's elected back to power for his second term, he'll impose a flat 60% tariff on all Chinese imports. Uh, of course, I mean, it looks like a starting salvo more than anything else in terms of negotiations, etc. But both are united that the tariffs will go up. And we are again perhaps going to be talking about, irrespective of who comes into the White House, tariff wars, right? I mean, uh, trade wars in that sense, uh, what we were talking about earlier. Now, where, do, where does all of this leave us uh, in terms of the market here? 
I think uh, we are still not out of the woods. I think that is that much is very clear. But can we get a decent rebound from where we left off on Tuesday? I think it's possible. So uh, the reason I say that is because we've completed a 61.8% retracement of the full rally. from the th That was a 1,000-point up move, 21,710 to 20, 22,775, almost exactly 1,000 points. And on Friday, we got to 22,117, and then we had a nice, decent bounce. Not a big one, but uh, we left off. Uh, you know, about 30, 40 odd points higher from that level. Can we get a bounce from here? Fingers crossed. Gap area, where's the resistance? If we do get that bounce, it's around the 22, uh, 22 to 40 to 22, 500. It's a big gap area. And that, I think, in that zone, the market, the Nifty, will find some resistance. Uh, the Bank Nifty on Tuesday made a low at the 40-day. It was almost exactly to the point. The low was the 40-day exponential moving average. And then we saw a bounce, which was sharp. And here for the Nifty Bank, supports come in at 47,472 and 47,314. These are nothing but the 20-day, which the Nifty Bank closed above, and then the 40-day, which was the low, which corresponded with the low on the Bank Nifty on Tuesday's session. The Gift Nifty will come up on your screen. I think it's going to be an interesting next couple of sessions. It's absolutely flat this morning in terms of uh, the open, at least, right now. Sonia. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, I think a lot of the damage has been done, right, in the last couple of days. I mean, yeah. the Nifty is down almost uh, for three days in a row now. And uh, if you look at it, there was large selling that you've seen from foreign investors as well. So, FII sold, what, about 4,468 crores in a single day on uh, on Tuesday. And put together, in three trading sessions, FIs have sold 15,000 crores. So, money is being pulled out from the foreign investors. Uh, in fact, from the April 10th high, the Nifty has already lost about 2.6%. So, yes, we are in some sort of a, a corrective phase. How long this phase will last, no one can tell, no one can predict it. Uh, the best thing to do is just to sort of step back and, you know, wait for this uh, phase to sort of settle. As Sudarshan Sukhani was also telling us a couple of days ago, uh, wait for some sort of base formation before taking a next call in the market. If you look at what happened in the US markets as well, four straight days of selling. Uh, the positive is that Brent crude has fallen 3% overnight. Uh, the, Brent is now at $87 a barrel, a little above that. Um, the market seems to have dismissed the risk of a wider war between Israel and Iran for now. And, um, you know, the fact that that could disrupt supplies further. So that risk has been dismissed and hence Brent crude is back at $87 a barrel. A couple of things to watch out for. It's a big day of earnings. You have an uh, emphasis that will be coming out with their numbers post-market hours today. So we'll track that very closely. During market hours, you have Bajaj Auto that comes out with earnings. Now remember, this is a stock that has done phenomenally well. It's up almost 80% in the last six months alone. Good numbers. Numbers are expected to be strong. Revenue growth of 25%. Margin stable at 20%. But a lot of the good news perhaps is already in the price. So just keep an eye out on this stock. And those are the earnings estimates for you on your screen. Uh, very strong earnings reported from Angel One. So I'll be watching not just Angel One, which has done really well, but that entire space, right, with the way the markets are doing. Revenue growth of 28%. Client base has gone up 14% quarter on quarter. Uh, so it, that's one stock that you need to keep on your radar. Of course, apart from plenty of others that we'll talk about. But uh, Rima, what are you watching out for? Well, just a quick word on Asia as we begin trade. Korean markets have surged 1.7%, so there is a lot of buying emerging there. Nikkei is absolutely flat, but with a positive buy, 0.3% up on that. And Hang Seng too has a gain of about 0.7%. So the color across Asia this morning is clearly green. I don't think there are any markets which are in the red over there. That said, the U.S. markets in, the, in this month of April have been in a bit of a corrective phase. So as they sift through the Fed commentary, the geopolitics, the key U.S. indices, Wall Street is down on an average 5% in the month of April. In that context, the Nifty is only down close to about 0.8%. And just to add to the cues for the day, the massive Vodafone idea, 18,000 crore FPO opens today. Uh, yesterday, the anchor book was known. They you know, invested 5,400 crore, crore. And it boasts of some big marquee names, GQG, UBS, Fidelity, Motilal, Oswal. Uh, Infosys, the numbers will be out post-market hours. So the press conference is scheduled at 4.30 p.m. And here, the street will watch for the guidance. Q4 numbers are, you know, a sideshow. They've already done and dusted. But FY25 guidance, broadly, 3 to 5%. But other big numbers, uh, you know, companies reporting numbers, HDFC Life Insurance, ICSA Securities, Mastec, Network 18, and TV 18. 
And today being Thursday, we also have the weekly options expiry. Okay, so we have our hands full, right, in terms Absolutely. of earnings and lots to look forward to for the markets as well. Uh, so without wasting any time, let's kickstart the show and tell you uh, about some market opinion. Jonathan Garner of Morgan Stanley says that the Asia emerging market equities are seeing a short-term correction and a divergence opens up in reaction to a stronger US growth outlook, shallower rate cutting profiles and the bullish US dollar trends. He says Japan and Taiwan remain well placed on the US revenue exposure and correlations with the end 2024 Fed expectations while other markets have deteriorated. He also adds that Japan and India remain their top developed market and emerging market picks. Uh, let's get you some money market views now. This is uh, Parul Mittal Sena of Standard Chartered who says that USD INR has moved higher on stronger US dollar, FBI outflows and elevated crude oil prices in amid increased geopolitical tensions. She expects the depreciation in the rupee could be gradual in case of sustained dollar strength given that forex reserves are at an all-time high. Positive fundamentals and third, the possibility of policy continuity post-elections is a medium-term positive. She expects the USD INR to trade uh, in the 83.35 to 83.75 to the dollar range for the week ahead. All right, and on the bonds, Parul says that the Indian yields moved higher on higher US yields as markets paired US Fed rate cut expectations. The US rates moved higher on stronger than expected data and higher oil prices driven by geopolitical uncertainties in West Asia. She expects the benchmark 10-year yield to trade in a range of 7.1 to 7.2 percent in the very near term. And we have lots of stock-specific action to track today and we'll get to it in just a bit in our special top 10 segment. We're looking at ICSA Lombard, Just Dial, Brigade Enterprises, Suntech Realty, Ambuja Cement, IFL Finance, Biocon, Jubilant, Farmova and Angel One that are on our radar on the back of positive news flow. Tata Communications is the only stock which could open in the red, posted Q4 numbers.